AI at Mercari. In this episode, we will be looking at how Mercari's Customer Relationship Management CRM team provides better experiences and improves business performance through the use of machine learning and causal inference. If you own a business and you want to increase sales, you might employ some marketing tactics. For example, you might distribute some handouts or you may place banners. You might also offer special deals to people who walked into your store. Some people respond better to certain types of marketing tactics, and some people might even decide not to do business with you because they don't like a particular marketing method. For example, maybe a walking customer who intended to buy something may feel turned off when the clerk hovers around and keeps talking to them. Maybe they would have bought something if they were left alone. The lesson here is that there are many types of customers. There are people who respond better to marketing. There are people who might do business with you if they're left alone. If we make efforts making marketing to people who don't respond well, then we're basically wasting money. Now, Mercari has an app that allows people to buy and sell their items in order to encourage our customers to purchase more items. We run many marketing campaigns to provide special offers to our customers, just like any other business. Wouldn't it be great if we could figure out just who to send these special offers to before we send them out? That would be much more cost effective. At Mercari, we do exactly that. We use what's an uplifting modeling method along with machine learning to optimize marketing spendings and make the experience for the customers better. Today, most of the development of an AI ML project needs to go through the same four iterative steps. The first step is data collection for analysis and experimentation. The second step is model training based on some parameters. After the model is completed, the next step is evaluation, which is done using sample data. Then we deploy the monitoring to real users to check the performance and get feedback. Now, let's see it in action. Mercari utilizes many types of campaigns. For example, listing promotions, flash sales, coupon offers, etc. In order to train our models, we need to collect data from these campaigns. For each campaign, the users are split into treatment groups, that is, those who received campaign notifications and the control group who do not receive the offers and perform A-B testing. Within the treatment group, customers get different types of promotions for comparison. For example, some customers may get an ad, with or without a landing page. Customers may get different triggers. For example, one user may get the notification when they launch the app, or only when they perform specific actions, such as searching for items. For each of these settings, user data as to if they enter the campaign or use the offered coupon are used as objects for the training. We also use the user's historical information as features. For example, we use their actions, such as when they last used our app. The user has checked the coupons that are available to them. The user has searched for items. The user has purchased items, etc. The number of times that the user has performed these actions are also a good indicator of the user's characteristics. Before we get into how we train our ML models, we need to cover some terminology for uplift modeling. So, remember, our goal is for our customers to make purchases. In an uplift model, customers who react negatively to an action are known as do not disturbs or sleeping dogs. When left alone, they may make purchases, but when contacted with marketing, they will not make any purchases. Customers who do not make purchases regardless of if a marketing contact has been made or not are called lost causes. Conversely, customers who will make purchases regardless of if a marketing contact has been made or not are called sure things. And finally, customers who make purchases upon being exposed to marketing or those who make more purchases or make purchases earlier are called the persuadables. So, upon including them into our campaign, we lose sales from do not disturbs. Campaigns have no effect on what loss causes and sure things do. We don't have an incentive to include them in our marketing campaigns. 
Campaigning against the persuadables is where we would like to focus. Now that we have defined terminology, let's get back to our models. For this project, we need to create two kinds of models. One model is used to predict and filter out the sure things. Since they will eventually make purchases, they may distort our analysis. One model is used to make uplift predictions by predicting uplift scores. This helps us to filter those users who we can make the most impact on. Now, while these are very effective models to filter who to send notifications to, we can refine this further. The metrics we care about are buyer conversion rate and cost per acquisition. Buyer conversion rate, or BCR for short, is just the ratio of the number of users who made purchases over the total number of users who we sent campaign notifications to. Cost per acquisition, or CPA for short, is the total amount of value we spent over the number of users who made a purchase. So, if we sent campaign notifications to 100 users and 50 users made purchases, the BCR is 0.5. And if we sent a coupon for each of those users and the total amount of discount was $300, CPA is $300 over 50, which is $6. These numbers may fluctuate if the prediction models that we created earlier fail to filter out the sure things, because these customers would have bought something regardless of being included in the campaign or not. To solve this issue, we need to include the concept of profit in the model. So not only do we consider if a customer made a purchase or not, but we include how much they spent on those purchases. This is called the Profit Uplift Model. Let's say you select four groups of customers based on some attributes. Then we first observe their behavior without sending a campaign notification. In this hypothetical experiment, we assume that there is only one item worth $100 in the market and that customers only buy one item. Then you send them a campaign notification for a 40% off coupon. Here we assume that the customers always use the coupon sent. This means that when they make a $100 purchase, we're paying the cost of $40, so the profit is $60. Taking these together, we can find out who are most likely to respond positively to campaign notifications. This clearly shows us that Group A has no effect. They are the lost causes. Group C did not make purchases after the campaign. This means that by sending a coupon, we actually lost the $100 that the customer may have used if we did not send the coupon. They are the do not disturbs. Group D bought something regardless of the campaign. We would have made $100 if we didn't send a coupon, but only made $40, so we lost $60. They are the sure things. That leaves Group B, who make more purchases if they are sent campaign notifications. And we know that this is the segment that we should be marketing against. Voila! We made various experiments similar to this, and we found that the profit uplift model generally performs better than the basic uplift models and probability models. The model that we created was based on a sample data set, and now we need to evaluate it against production data. In particular, we would like to find the optimal model to minimize CPA while retaining high levels of BCR. CPA and BCR are affected by the campaign incentives, so the actual evaluation must be performed against different conditions. In this video, we will not talk about these different incentives and focus on the generalized tendencies from the results. Over multiple evaluation runs, we obtain the following data. This shows the result of collected data from the evaluation runs. The vertical axis shows how much the CPA decreased as a percentage. This means that as the value increases, the cost per acquisition decreases. This is what we want. The horizontal axis shows how much the BCR decreases. As we move along the x-axis, we have less buyers. The green dotted line shows the results from random sampling. The orange line shows the results from using the probability model. And the blue line shows the results from using the profit uplift model. You can clearly see that for almost any given point, the uplift model performs better than the other models. Through experiments, we decided that we want our models to filter and select users to send notifications to, 
and in doing so, we want to minimize CPA while keeping BCR drop to under 5% compared to contacting all customers. We must keep monitoring the model performance to make sure they are performing as expected. To do this, we segment users into at least three groups and perform A-B testing. Control group, these users will not be sent notifications. All users treated group, all users in this group will be sent notifications. And the test groups. The test groups are further divided into subgroups where they are treated using different settings, such as different coupon values and campaign triggers, like notifying the customer when the app launches, when they made a search for something, click the like button on an item, etc. These metrics are collected and analyzed to make sure that our models are working correctly. In an ideal world, customers in the test group should always respond better than other groups, but this is not always the case. For example, during a 30-day A-B testing, it could be that during 25 days, the test group performs better, but on the remaining five days, they might perform worse than the others. This discrepancy may either be a simple fluctuation in the data. For example, a random customer can show up and buy tons of items and skew the results, or it can be a flaw in our model. So statistical analysis is performed regularly to verify that our models are working as expected. And if need be, we go back to collecting new data or training our data again to improve on our existing models. Mercari's marketing performance has made significant improvements since incorporating the machine learning models to our marketing offers. The models allowed us to make better choices for both the business and the customers alike without needing to make obtrusive changes to how our marketing campaigns are conducted or how our customers use our apps. The AI team at Mercari is always striving to make customer experience better through the use of AI. If you are interested in these kinds of projects, please don't hesitate to contact us from the link in the description.